right everyone as you can see we just started to cut down the um, green manure for the leaf trenches now I'm trying it again this is a uh, mustard mixed in with crimson flour so we've just got to a stage where it's about just over 12 inches high you know, we don't want it to go too long in case it flowers. I don't know how long it takes the flower, but uh, we should chop all this down as best we can, and then we'll leave it for the day or so for it to uh, to limp, soften down, and it'll be easier to dig in and try to dig it now. And as it as it will. As it will, it'll, um, you know, it'll be a lot denser when you dig it in. So if I try to dig it in now, it's still bulky material. So, just chop it all up. It's supposed to hold on to nutrients and, release, and slow release them over the season. So, what I did when I was when I do my trenches, I put a bit of uh, well rotted compost in there, the compost in like I showed you in the plot tour, and uh, put it that we, we tilled it all in, we put a bit of the old rock dust in, and uh, some chicken manure pellets, and then after all that, we give it a good soaking. I try and keep the trenches moist as possible and uh, you know we give it a good soaking you know hopefully this will pick and I put some trench fertiliser in as well that gives you your potash your, your super phosphate so we are going to put none of that in and uh, you know, that's a slow release trench fertiliser. I was putting in uh, December and it'll work slowly and hopefully it'll pick some of that up and release it even in later in the season as well. So we've got a bit of extra extra feed. Well that's a the theory anyway, whether it'll work I don't know, but we'll try it. And the trench fertilizer we've only got a little bit of nitrogen. So the third doors I'll be adding to this in the end of March will probably be some hoof and horn. Hoof and horn, and that's probably it really, because we there's nitrogen is the fastest leaking fertilizer out. And so we'll add some of that. As it's organic as well. We'll, uh, it's a slow release, so hopefully we'll get it through the season as and when the plants will take it up. Well, that's a theory anyway, so we'll see if it works. So there we go. As you can see now, chop it all down, give it a good mix in. Give it all good chopping. And like I say, we'll let this go wilt, we we'll dig it all in, and then once we've dug it all in, we'll give the trenches a really good soaking, and that'll break it down even further, and hopefully, if there's any worms, and they'll take it down, they'll come up from the bottom, and they'll take it down for food, and then hopefully come by planting time, we'll do what we said, at the earth and all. Well, I'll show you to that anyway, we might add something else, but probably not much. Some earth and horn, and that'll be it. And then, uh, if I think I might add a couple of things, I don't know, but I think it'll just be earth and horn. We don't want too much fertiliser, because the problem is it's when it releases, and it could release it in the crucial part of the season, and that's where you your leaks will probably split and things like that. So I'll give it a good soaking and then 
you know, we'll show you digging it in in a couple of days' time when it's, uh, when it's soft and it's going to nothing really, you know, to be less than what it is. And then we'll start digging it in and then we'll show you water in it. Okay, I'll carry on with this now and uh, we'll show you when we're going to dig it in. Oh, we're back. Well, after uh, a few days after, uh, you know, it's all it's all wilted down as you can see there. Now it's all wilted down nice now. So we will start digging it in. The reason I, I let it wilt, well, like I said, it, it's more pliable to dig in, and plus then it'll rot down a lot quicker. Because you've chopped the they've chopped the tops off, you know. And if you don't chop it up and you just try to dig it in, it might still survive and still grow, as you can see bits here. You know, it's because they'll still have contact with the soil and they'll still be getting moisture. So it's always best, as you see, I've started a bit. You'll still see a bit of green on the top, but they'll disappear by planting time comes. And after this, I should give it a good good soak, so it helps it rot down even quicker and further. You could probably cover it up, and that would work a lot better in your favour, which I might do if I uh, can find some membrane or something about to uh, cover it up. So... We'll dig all this in, and also we we'll get all dug in. Hopefully, whatever worms is in there, we'll take it down, feed on it, and hopefully it'll do our beds good during the growing season. So, you know, it's all a matter of just trying new things, and hopefully it works. I mean, it seems to work for mouse growers, so why not give it a try? Like I say, worth a go. So, as you can see now, I've started to dig it in. Start to dig it in. Oh, like that. Yes, you can still see the bits of green on the top, but that won't last long once it's all start to ferment even more. And uh, by the time we come planting now, this should all disappear with, you know, watering. You should always keep your beds moist anyway. But, uh, you know, to keep them ticking over, has I, I don't take my cover off. You know, it, it's just a bit too much hassle. And I probably could have built it where I could have took it on and off. But I never did. So this is what we have to do. And, yeah, I'm going to carry on with the rest of this and this other side. And, uh Hopefully we can get it finished, and then we'll move on. Thank you. Right, everyone. We're back. And what we're going to do today is uh, pot some of these giant cabbages up, because they really need a potting on. As you can see, we've already made the mix up. Uh, six scoops of multi-purpose clover compost to three scoops of John Innes number two mixed in um, 20 mil of Nutrimate and a few scoops of Amiculoid. So I'm going into a two litre pot from a one litre now. So let's move these out the way. Right. So one litre. I'm going to put a bit of compost in the bottom. So, and I'll show you the roots on them in a sec. Now, these have been probably left in the pot a little bit too long. Because on the red cabbages, you can see a bit of starvation. So, I mean, that's too much. So, take it out. See, when you're potting on from a one litre to a two litre, it looks bigger. But you take much. And, uh See so that just fits. So you always turn it a diagonal so you can get the compost in a lot better. So we fill it up. 
you know, you'll fill the pot in as well, so makes life a bit easier. Hopefully you can see this because I can see what the recording's like. But uh, yeah, we've got to pot them on. And then I'm going to show you the greenhouse we put them in. And uh, I've made an arch with a bit of a, well, painting and decorating. Like It's like a clear dust sheet. It's a bit like um, a bit like an encloche polytunnel. And uh, these will go in, and what I do is put a, a drop of paraffin on over night time because we are going to eat two greenhouses up with gas. So just put one, bit of drop of paraffin on over night, and come over early morning and switch it off because, you know, them and your two, they just keep the, the frost out as this week's going to be a cold one. Even a chance with a drop of snow, but it's mainly for the north, more in Scotland and things like that. With a bit of luck, we'll miss it. Right, we've made that now. There we go. We got oh, our indentation there. If you can, oh, it's collapsed. <laughs> so, start again. See, everything down the right. So, Try again. That's nice. Square it up. Yep, everything down the right always the first time. You know, sometimes it's a quick process, sometimes it can take you a, a bit of time. The weather it's just starting to rain really dull today. So here in the Midlands. But anyway, still cracking on. All stuff's got to be potted up, watered. The reason we're moving into the, the big greenhouse is uh, because we're going to get beat for room when we pot on. Maybe next week, we're going to pot all the pot leeks on, the blanched leeks on, the heavyweight onions and the quality onions. And they're all going to go into their final pots. So we're going to need the room and these giant cabbages, once they be potted on, they'll romp away and obviously they'll get wider and things like that. And uh, we're going to need the room definitely because you could fit everything the way you want to in one greenhouse. If I could, I would. Right. Now, I'm going to use some mycorrhizal giant veg as you can see there, had this off Kevin Forte's site. Thanks, Kevin. Now, in mycorrhizal fungi, is everything, but each one's different because some of it, they've always got something different in them and from different companies. But uh, I've used various ones, but uh, you know, use this one, it's a good one. So, um, Visits Kevin's uh, giant vegetable website, and there's things on there for you. As you can just see there, there it is. And Kevin will sort you out. We use giant veg now. The site don't work on giant cabbages, which might be true, but we're going to put it in anyway. I mean, we ain't lost nothing, have we? So the site don't work on brassicas for some reason. I don't know why. But we've got a little scoop there. That'll do. A little sprinkle in the hole. Right, there we go. One little scoop, that's all we've done. We get our giant cabbage. This is a reselected green giant cabbage from Kevin Forty again. As you can see, these were started on the 2nd of December. So we'll see how they go. And this is reselected giant corn, giant Cornish cabbage. So as a Cornish giant and reselected. Each, each and everybody has reselected their own, but re, Kevin Forte has reselected. And you'll probably see it on his website as um, flat top. So I don't know what that means, but there you go. Look at that. Lovely white roots. 
now browning roots i mean root rot lovely white root i think this is what you probably call pot bone now as you'll see on the red cabbage they've gone purple i always thought that was a sign of cold but as it's in a heated greenhouse and as you can as you can see there the lowest it's been is 54 and so we've got no problem with that so it must be a lack of food because they really do need potting on as you can see they're lovely so what you can always do you can tease them you don't have to do this you can just pot it straight on tease the roots help them out so because they'll keep going round and round and round until they'll come to the top they'll even come to the surface the roots to rewind the self out because that's where they are all right there we go look at that all right and that will romp away now what i'm going to do is take these two bottom leaves off one i don't know if you can see this but two chuck them in the bucket now there was green that means they're still feeding but what i'm trying to see, see that knuckle there i'm trying to bury it up to there to try and keep these cabbages short as possible because that will go slightly long on you if you let them all right push that in firm them in because as they say cabbages like to be firmed in you know they're like hard ground that helps them to keep them sturdy it's the same when it's in the pot so I'll give them a good firming you'll know when you're firmed the pot starts to swell out a bit i've had always i've had to do a voiceover on this and uh where i've said oh no i've started to firm it in because my mic switched off i forgot to charge it so we have done a voice overlay and i really do apologize for all this but as you can see, I'll continue now to firming it in, you know, packing it round to make it nice and sturdy. You know, you've got to keep making it firm like you would in the ground, like I did say. You know, we're carrying on now and we're packing it in, potting it up. And yeah, and just make it as sturdy as possible there. And as you can see, it's a nice sturdy plant. I am rocking it side to side, just showing you I'm burying it up to, you know, the leaf. To that top leaf axle to make it nice sturdy and properly for the simple basins is you don't want that cabbage will go long at that point and you want to keep that stem as short as possible and you can just see in the in the uh, video now i am i'm just still packing it in packing it round keep that stem as short as possible and as you can see there, it don't rock, it don't move. We can wobble it about and it still stays in that position that we've planted it in. So yeah, you know, you, you keep them firm, just like you would in the ground, same in the pot. But as you got there, nice cornish giant cabbage potted up. This will go into the, the, the large greenhouse. So... You know, you'll see me take it in in a, in a moment, but we have potted them up. It's a nice sturdy plant, that's what you want, because these cabbages are going to get really large. And as you can see for the red ones here too, you know, they look like those deficient of hunger. And that's the only reason I could put them from going red, because they was pot bound. And they do really need potting up. And as you can see, hopefully all that green colour will come back. As you can see, they're really pop brown, these red cabbages. That's the only reason. If I'm wrong, please, could, you know, and you know, let me know what the possibilities it could be. But uh, it couldn't be the cold because they're in a well-heated greenhouse. So that's my only issue that I could find with it. But as we're carrying on now... I'm talking, you know, just like I've just said, you know, we need to pot them up. And their last pot will be a 5 litre pot. As you can see, I've taken into the into the big greenhouse now because we do need the space. 
because we are potting on in the next week or so the leeks and onions and they are a priority so they are all going to their five litre pots three litres for the blanche because you know that's their last pot for for the season but there we're going to pot on another one you know getting it all done I, once again, I do apologise that I've had to do this voice voice over on the commentary because my mic switched off and it was just one of them things, but I do apologise. But as you can see there, I potted up the next one. And then we'll pot up, carry on as we go in until we get them all done. But what we will be doing, we'll be planting two of Neil's world record cabbage and one of the uh, Mammoth Red Rock to see how they do comparison and how they turn out. But as you see there, potting them up. And then I'll continue to do them all until I finish. I mean, it, it can be as quick as process as you want, or, but I like to take my time. Always take your time and get them done properly. Get them done right and try to do it right the first time. So, yeah, that's where you can see as it collapsed in the one photo that I was trying to rush, you know. So always take your time, do it again. But sometimes it just happens. As you can see, we've now made the indentation ready for the next one to go in. Put the mycorrhizal giant veg in. We've got a sprinkle all around the sides. Good, a good bit in the bottom. Then we've tapped our cabbage out the pot. Once we've tapped it out the pot, we'll then tease the roots out to help anything possible to help them out. <clears throat> They'll probably need potting on again in uh, about three to four weeks time. And that will be their last pot then in a five litre. There will be quite a size cabbage. When we're planting out from the five litre. But uh, as you can see. Really good root system. It is pot bound like I said. But uh, yeah. I'm looking good. Beautiful white roots. Now if they did have some browning on the roots. That means. They haven't been watered regularly enough. And they're probably going well over the top. <clears throat> and you probably cause yourself a bit of root rot. But uh, as you can see, we've potted them up. You know, we, we've gone through the stages now. And uh, as like I say, you know, you, you pot them up when things need potting up. And then we give them a good watering in. As you can see, give a good watering in. A bit of square to liquid seaweed each time we water. So it keeps giving them trace elements, that bit of seaweed, what's good for them. And then it gives them that little feed all the time. Because don't forget, you've only got four, maximum six weeks of compost feed. So you've got to keep giving that trickle feed all the time. But as you can see there, you've got to, that number one priority is to make that cabbage as sturdy as possible. So that boy keep firming it in, firming it in. We want it nice and solid like you would just in the ground. That's what you're trying to recreate all the time. So as you can now see me continue to firm it in. 
to push it well in and now I'm showing you that it's solid as a rock it doesn't rock too much from either side and now I've gone to take it in the other greenhouse and I'm probably explaining on what we're gonna I'm gonna show you next and I'll show you where I've made the cloth arch in the other greenhouse because we need the room so that's what we was going to do right we're back and you know we've potted on the giant cabbages now and I just wanted to show you this cloche arch that I've made you know just to keep because the, the rooms are premium in, in the heated greenhouse you know with a gas heater and uh, my number one priority is my leeks and my onions and my quality onions the only thing what's left to come in here now will be the 250 gram onions but that'll be in a couple of days time uh they will stand a lot of coal but i just want to you know on the side of caution just over the next couple of days as temperatures and plummeting like they did today but uh overall it's been a nice day here in the midlands and uh it's the sun's been out quite for the time really cold though but the sun's been nice and you know we am lucky at the moment that we are now snow touch wood we don't get any you lot can bloody have it <laughs> right but anyway as you can see now we've potted all the giant cabbages up into two litre pots uh, the giant green cabbage and the giant red cabbage I bought the chrysanthemums and they do like cooler conditions what i've seen and read up so we bought some of the fuchsia cuttings in as well um some we, uh, then we're going to set as standards as you can see fuchsia cutting there coming a bit closer you know that we're going to set a couple of these as standard and depends how the standard gets on this year it may take a couple of years but if we can get some sort of standard out of it this year We'll put two outside the front door and uh, where I, I do my front garden up, a uh, lawn renovation every year. Um, we plant the borders of flowers and so on. But uh, we'll see how these go. We'll make a couple of pot plants out of them for the pot plant class. Um, and we'll see how we get on there. And then we'll have a few for the border, you know, what the display, what we're going to do on the front. So we don't have to look after it too much. We'll get all plants. We'll look after the self, really. But, uh, yeah, there's a few cuttings. And, uh, yeah, basically, I, I've made a cloche arch. And this this cover here, it's um, painting and decorating a dust sheet. You know what you put on the floor, what you cover your furniture up with. But uh, it's like um, it's like a diffused one. So, it's a bit like a polytunnel cover, sort of diffused. And uh, as you can see, we've, uh, you know, we've got the plants only for that extra protection. As like I say, it's going to be cold. So, you're given that extra protection of a night time and then as you will have a little drop of paraffin on but uh i should get you now and give you a little sh thing here well, i made this art class arch just give me one second uh, da, 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 da. to make this tripod smaller whoops So yeah, I'll just show you what we're doing because it, you know, it may be some of use to you, may not be, or you might already do this. Okay, as you can see there, it's a cloche arch. So what we got, you can see on your greenhouse bar there, you have a support bar, don't you? And well, you do on most greenhouses anyway. And I've tied some string all the way down 
all the way down to the bottom as you can see there and that holds a clock shop we've got some things at the back you know the green air clips that hold your bubble wrap on and so and we've took that past under the bench as you can see there right and that'll give it maybe one dig maybe one one and a half degrees you know above the temperature that it's going to forecast so as you can see and it's all we do is to roll it down right so in the day time if it's a nice day we should pull these covers up so they can have the full sunshine as you can see there one second i just pull it a bit tighter i do but uh, as you can see there now i'm all covered up and i'll show you from the outside and that's how they am in there all closhed up as you can see the strings on there just support it and all it's got a good height good depth on it and uh, the plants all they'll be okay in there it's just that extra bit of protection there we go we've got a few croissants and there's the cabbages like say that gap there as you can see that will have the 250 gram onions in after the next couple of days but uh that's how i made the cloth arch and that's the paraffin heater it's one of these uh, aladdin um is it aladdin it, it, it's a blue flame i've lent it from my friend it was a bit rough and ready so i'll get it a spray paint but uh blue frame and we just had that on overnight that just keeps the frost out and uh that'll break the temperature up in here it's still quite low because don't forget it's a, a 10 by 8 greenhouse and it's quite tall this one taller than some and uh you know it will break keep that frost away so that's the main thing but what i was thinking of doing let's just chuck this back up i think it's just easy enough to put on the top right and then you just leave it resting on the top and then in the day like today we've had this up and then the sun can get in from over there above the greenhouse straight onto our plants but what i was thinking of doing is it might be an idea but i'll have to see how it goes is to cut an hole here right an hole in there i'll cut an hole in the bubble wrap cut an hole in the plywood board and then we could have the paraffin eater stack we make the stack a little bit longer i've got some tubing and we could have a inch maybe inch and a half sticking in the middle or close to the middle as possible from underneath and what that would be able to do but you know if you're concerned about the, you know it's going to get hot so what we'll do we'll put some aluminium tape around the hole you know so it it doesn't burn out plywood or put some aluminium foil and tape it on so the you know the funnel they'll burn burn the wood or you know cause any fire or anything like that so we've got to be as safe as possible but cut an hole make sure there's no bubble wrap around it no wood around it and we could have the stack sticking up about inch inch and a half now the idea of that once this is over at night all this cloche we got the eight coming through the bottom from the bottom there up through the stack and we have all this heated then all this i'm thinking of trying it now the only downside that it could come with this but we won't know until we try it is that the fact is the ventilation now as you know all paraffin carries fumes and it has to have so much ventilation but i mean if we've just had it open now like there 
you know, with the, the funnels on. I've got two air vents up the top, two this side, two that side, and we've got the plenty of ventilation. But where you'll have this cloche, you've got no, you've got not really that much ventilation because, you know, you've got it enclosed. But what we will have, but we'll have to try it and see how the plants respond and react to this, is put the heater funnel there. And then, because we're going to have it sticking up a bit, because when we water it, it'll lay on here, and we don't want it dripping in and doubting it overnight. But we'll have heat, you know, the heat will come up, hit the top, and disperse across the bench, and we'll have a heated, heated cloche overnight time when it's most, the frost is at the most, the most of its peak. And, uh, you know, we come over early morning before we go out and uh, we knock it off and then we come over about 6 o'clock. So it gets about 13 hours of heat, you know, just to break that nighttime air up and, uh, you know, eat it close. So that's an idea that you could possibly do. A lot of people do it with eat more, but they might, you can't get them no more unless you buy one second hand. But that's a, an idea you could... Cut an hole in the wood, put some tape, aluminium tape, you know, you can get that from the hardware shop, and put inch, inch and a half, and all the heat will come up in here, and it'll disperse. Now, if you've got a blue flame paraffinator, you're better off than a normal one, because the simple fact is that it'll cause too much smoke or fumes. Have it really low, and you just have a nice even temperature as it'll hit the roof, and then it'll spread across. But uh, like I say, that's what we're we're hoping to do. We might try it because if we don't try, we will now. And I've just sorted that idea out of my head, really. And I think that'll be a really a good idea. You know, you'll have a heated cloche. Now I'm hoping I need to use this bench. I mean, I have got the the other side. I've got a bench for and one across the back here so we've got benches all the way around because soon we'll be sowing flowers for our front garden for the you know front of the allotment and bits and pieces you know we're mainly for the front garden but uh yeah we've got the bench and then we'll be starting tomatoes and then april towards the end of this month april that's when you get your seeds sowing and uh it starts to really get in full swing but the heated greenhouse by the gas, next week I be, will be potting all of my leeks, onion onions, quality onions, heavy onions, pot leeks, blanched leeks. We'll be going into their five litre pots. The, uh, the pot leeks are going into five litre. The heavy onions are going into five litre. The blanched leeks are going into three litre rows. That'll be their final pot. Uh, and the quality onions will be going from the three and a half inch straight into a two litre pot possibly, maybe a one litre. We'll see how they go. We'll see what the root system's like. We might be able to get away straight with a two and then they'll stay in that two until we plant it out. And now everything, we've just got to keep on top of the watering, top of your spraying. You know, that's your two main things. And uh, we can hopefully carry on and see how the season progresses and see what we get. But like I say, that's that's the idea I've made in this greenhouse, so it's just to make some room. I mean, cabbages will tolerate, you know, a fair bit of cold, but it's just the frost that you just want to break up. And by just having a paraffin heater in the middle of the greenhouse will break that up. The cloche will help as well. You may get a one degree, one and a half degree. It all depends. But if we can try that with the heater, put it in there and make it as like as an heated cloche, just have a night time because that's where your most your most harshest temperatures are. You know, I know it can be cold in the day, but uh, your really harsh temperatures, you know, is at night because you've got no daylight, you've got no sun, you've got nothing. But in the day, sometimes the sun breaks out, and as soon as you get a temperature, sun, that bit of sun, even if it's for five, six minutes. 
it'll heat the greenhouse up and you'll have them temperatures but um, we'll try it and uh, I hope you like this video and uh, we'll, we'll keep making them I'll show you on each job but uh, I want to say thank you very much you continue to subscribe like comment if you need to ask just ask and I'll try and help you and if I don't know I'll find you the information as best as I possibly can but thank you very much